So right here today, I'm telling you how I would start a Barbarian for the first ladder of Diablo 2 Resurrected. So first off, I'm going to smack away all the things that are the common between every single character. First off, don't be that guy who plays your ladder by yourself. Make sure you meet up with other people. You'll level up so much faster and it'll be so much more fun if you actually play online with other people. Second off, your full party is probably going to want to go to the Den of Evil right off the bat. You'll get your first few levels there and you also get a free skill point. Next on, you hit the tower. You can definitely go down and do the tower or you can skip it. It's up to you, but it is a good way to find runes in order to make some of the rune words that every single character makes and to get some more levels because there's a lot of champion packs down there. Now with those runes, there's certain rune words early on that everybody makes like stealth, like leaf for any fire characters. You can even a little bit later on make things like or soul for your lore helm or Ancient's Pledge or Rhyme Shield a little bit later on also. You also want to make sure you have at least 25 strength when you come into Act 2. That way you can buy a belt and you can hold more potions in that belt in order to increase your safety and have more mana potions. It's just a really good idea. Now once you get done with Act 1, you're probably going to be like 12 to 15. That'll be perfectly all right because once you get to Act 2, you go ahead and play through that. Once you get to Tal Rasha's Tombs, make sure you do not leave Act 2 until you're at least level 22 on your first character playthrough for ladder. Now that's because you need to be at least level 24 by the time you get to Ancients. Once you kill the Ancients, they'll give you enough experience to bump up to level 25. And it's very important to get level 25 after Ancients because that's the point where you start gaining a ton of experience from doing normal bail runs. Now, if you get the Ancients and you're not high enough level, you and your party go back and do tomb runs until everyone gets up to the minimum of that level 24. There are some other ways that people recommend, but that is the best way, in my opinion, that's a combination of easy and fast. On your initial playthrough, skip almost every other quest except for that initial Den of Evil quest and the ones that are mandatory in order to complete the game. You can always come back and do them, and once you get your teleport staff and once you get teleport on your sorcerers, it's going to be exponentially faster in order to just do them later. Make sure at some point you get your character a tele staff if you're not a sorceress in order to get through walls and it really does speed up the game a lot. You can get them as early as Act 3 normal from Ormus. Now at this point you just do a bunch of bail runs over and over again to you get at least over level 40. That's how high you're going to want to be before you go to Nightmare. You could go a little bit higher to 45 if you would like. Now you pretty much just play through Nightmare the same way you play through normal you just try to get through it as fast as you can and you're actually already high enough level to get all the way through to do the Ancients on Nightmare. Just get through the Ancients and get to Bale once again and just do Bale runs so you get to at least level 60. If you want to go to level 65 or 70 that's up to you but just get to at least level 60 before going to Hell and then you just kind of repeat the process again. Play through the entire game, get to Hell and then do Bale runs again till you get higher level. If you want to at any point, you could stop and do Mephisto runs or Andaro runs. You don't necessarily even have to beat Bale if you don't want to. You can actually get a bunch of levels just from running 85 areas or anywhere that your magic find if you would like. All those tips are kind of good for every single character, but now we'll get into the class specific stuff that's just for the Barbarian here. And that's, we'll start off with where you kind of want to put your stat points and when you want to do it. Now, when we're looking at the stat points, right off the bat, the first few levels, as you're going through Act 1, you're going to want to pump them into Vitality. Now, you're right up there attacking. You're taking the brunt of all the attacks from the monsters. Do so you want to have your Vitality up? Now, at some points, maybe later on in the leveling process here, in just Act 1 of Normal, you're going to want to start putting points into Strength to get it up to at minimum of 41. And you want to have the dexterity up to at minimum 35 when you're going into act two um that's so you can actually equip certain weapons that you're going to want to look for when you get into act two i'm gonna go ahead and pull that up now uh, right at the beginning here for weapons that you want to use um this is kind of needs to be talked about in concert with putting your stat points in you'll understand when i get to talking about it here but these scepters you can actually buy these straight from akara they only take 25 strength so you can use them right off the bat before you put any stats in so as soon as you get some gold to be able to purchase them get at least one and then by uh level six you want to be able to purchase two of them because then you can get the skill double swing then you can swing twice but right off the bat as soon as you can get one of these with two open sockets and uh but you're still going to be pumping your points into vitality at that point now, once you get on to Act 2, you're going to try to get yourself a three-socketed flail. You can actually purchase these from Farah with a little bit of shopping going out of town and coming back in and resetting her inventory. And eventually, it does take a hot minute, but you're going to try to get one of these. If you're playing through with a large group of people and you can't really take the time to try to shop these, 
asks people to try to pick up gray flails and find them for you if you get one of two sockets preferably you want to get one with three because then you can make a really good rune word later you can make the black rune word which is uh thull ionef i believe editor phil will throw up a picture of one just to double check that but that has a bunch of crushing blow on it, among other things so this three socketed flail playing on through the game it's going to be incredibly important to get so also since you have no area of effect damage on any of this stuff obviously it's all single shot stuff look around for the different poison potions like the the strangling gas potions you can use a little bit later on those are going to be a great way to get an area of effect that you usually would not get a way to help your party out and it's the only way that you can actually damage multiple monsters really early on in the game like that now, once you get those uh, strength there, uh, you're going to want to just go ahead and keep pumping vitality as you go up. Uh, because, like I said before, you're going to be taking a brunt of the hits and you really need to survive. Now, if you find any really good piece of gear along the way and you need to put a little bit more strength into wear it, once you find that piece and you're like, wow, I need a little bit more strength, go ahead and put the points into it. Maybe it's some sweet helmet or body armor and go ahead and pump those numbers up as you need it to wear gear. But in general, Vitality, vitality, vitality. Now, I already alluded to some of the stuff which you're going to want to put your points into. Uh, right off the bat here, combat skills. As soon as you can, get your point into bash. And then, obviously, we're going to be using flails. Your first few points are going to go into that bash and then into mace mastery. Now, once you can get down to double swing, that's going to be the main attack you're going to be using there uh, at the level 6 skill. And that's when you dual wield those maces. Uh, feel free those sockets in them if you find any chip gems along the way that add damage or perhaps you even get crazy lucky and you find some runes that you don't think you'll need in the future you could plug a couple tau runes into one and get a huge amount of poison damage on that or you can go ahead and just like i said any gems or any of the runes that plug in to get extra damage on those melee attacks now as you see here bash is actually a synergy for double swing so until you get double swing you can put some points into bash and once you get down to double swing, you can bump this up a bit. But you see the damage percentage actually does not increase based upon the levels you put into double swing. But it does increase the attack rating and decrease the mana cost. So from here on out for a little while, you're going to want to be splitting your points between double swing and bash. Now these are an as needed basis as you can get them. It's going to be later on in the game, but these are one point wonders here down below on the combat mastery tree. The increased stamina, uh, iron skin. Uh, increased speed and natural resistance you don't want to put any more than just the one point in there and then as you get plus skill level gear later in the game those will get boosted up you can also jump over to war cry uh, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put one point in the howl you're going to need to get down to some of these other different uh, war cries eventually so and this can get you out of some sticky situations howl sends nearby enemies scrambling away in fear now, since we're talking about how to start off a Barbarian for Ladder, um, you're pretty much going to be rocking this double swing for quite a while. Eventually here, when you get up high enough levels, you can get down to Frenzy. And uh, you could respec into Frenzy at that point. You're going to be doing bail runs at, you know, after level 24. You do the Ancients, then you go into bail runs. Then you're going to do those until you get over level 40, maybe even like 45 or whatever you wanted to do those two. So at that point, you could go ahead and respec if you want to go into Frenzy. Or when you're doing a bail run, you're going to get up to level 30 and you could go into your whirlwind if you wanted to. Or if you were one of the people that ended up going into the war cries, you could go ahead and do that um, if you were going to be a singer type barb. So another important thing is once you can get down to this at level 18, this is going to be a very good opportunity to get faster movement speed. Uh, you know, it's just to save yourself some time. Leap by itself, the range radius, like how far you can jump, it is actually incredibly small for uh, this skill the way that it is now but you don't want to pump a bunch of points into leap but leap attack does not have a range you can jump as far as you want you could jump all the way across the screen with leap attack so uh this is a very very good way you also leap and fly through the air quite quickly to be honest uh, they sped it up so this is actually a good movement option similar to how they use charge for the paladin to move around quicker you can actually use leap to move around quicker as well it does cost 10 mana though, which is kind of a lot early on. It's actually an incredibly large amount. So kind of using it in certain instances here and there to speed up to get past things is kind of what I would do. So yeah, the number of skill points actually used right here is 24 uh, into this stuff, which then you would do Ancients and go to do Bail. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can come over here and go ahead and respec if you wanted to. Get some points into the stuff that you need. 
pump up that vitality, and then go into whatever build, like I said, that you wanted to. Maybe you're going to rock Frenzy Barb. You can go down here and go ahead and pump that up if you wanted to. And you see all the synergies down here. Um, this is not a Frenzy Barb build, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but this was just an example. Make sure you get these one point wonders and whatever you end up using at that point, if you're still going to use flails or if you're going to transition into swords, uh, maybe we're going to say we're going to transition into swords so you can pump up the blade mastery right there and you can start switching out your weapons for the stuff that you need for that. And obviously, as you get playing into the game more, uh, you're going to want to go ahead, get your battle orders and go ahead and get battle command down here. Uh, you know, obviously, that's the same stuff that comes on the call to arms. So if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these ones up over here. YouTube knows you're going to like it, but hit that like button and subscribe up if you're new to the channel. Before you go, peace out and keep slaying.